I might go to mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Thank you very much. Download Veeley now. I like Puta R because we all kind of have a part and we all sort of wrote it together. That's really nice. Like it wasn't like someone came up and that there was a sort of a tune, but um, it kind of evolved. You know, there's a there's a tune, but there's a counter tune, it's a counter melody. Do you know what I mean? It, it all works together really nicely. And then there's the vocals that kind of grew out of everything. So that's, um, I think those pieces are usually the strongest. So a long time ago, I was in Kerry. Long, long time ago. And uh, I was um, up in the mountains at night time and it was lovely. And uh, it was about this time of year. There's these little things that grow on the earth and they make you go um, kind of googly eyed. So I was up and down that mountain, very googly eyed, happy with me lot. And some in me pocket, some in me other pocket and some in me bullock. And I loved it. And then I came down off the mountain and pulled into Mick Downs in his little cabin down there. And uh, went walking across up to the cliffs. There's kind of seven sisters or three sisters up at the cliffs, at the very edge there at the Atlantic. And as I was walking through, I could hear this music just like that. I kind of thing, and I thought, ah, oh, cool, I found it. Yes, I find them under a rock. That'll be me down the tunnel. Off I go. I come back in a couple of hundred years when I've had me fill. And I thought I was convinced, right? I'm out in the middle of nowhere up near these cliffs, and I can hear tunes, you know, whistling. And um, so I spent a good bit of the morning walking around in a circle. And I thought, I'll do it like the Aboriginals do, you know? You point at the thing and you walk around in a circle, and eventually you've mapped out the area. So I was going, right, where's the sound coming from? And I thought, I saw a kind of bunch of rocks there, and I thought, right, somewhere in there, there's the entrance to the other world. Tearing and Ogle and all of that, fairies, tunes, it'll be great. So I walked around the rocks a couple of times, I kept hearing this uh, whistling. Anyway, I found an old gate with a hole in it, and the wind, see the wind's kind of chaotic down there? So it was blowing different notes. I should have just told you, uh, I should have told you the truth really, shouldn't I? Yeah, I actually crept under the rock, I got a bit cut from the uh, briar and the ivy. They cleaned me up down there, they're all girls, I shouldn't have told that. <laughs> and uh, they welcome me back once or twice every year around this time of the year. And uh, I shouldn't have said that either. They'll probably come to nab me after tonight. But they gave me a couple of pots of gold and I have to stash them in, um, what are they called? Overseas accounts, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That'll be my lot. So this is called Putter Or.
In Czech, it's hernia. In uh, Swahili, it's everything. So you can hear in fact there's a kind of still the loops, the guitar is going like. It's a lot more minor orientated, but basically I had jammed this out for a keyla rehearsal about um, years ago. And it got recorded on one of the cassette recorders that Colin would use. And, um, that day passed on and whatever else I was saying, but uh, I think it was Dee and Colin. They'd sent around a tape of some of the demo recordings and they kept coming back to that one. They kept telling me, what was that thing? I don't know what it was. Eventually copped on and they started singing it to me. So we sat, I sat down and did it again. I found a, a little loop pedal that I hadn't been using. And um, the D had just started working on this tune over uh, and that's how that came, so that's how that tune emerged. So this is it live. So I suppose it just shows the different generations of it. I mean, it's faster. There's no loops behind it anymore, but uh, it still has the kind of the pace to it. Um, it's great bass line and all that, but I. Uh, that was the last thing that was put on it. There was no bass line on the last time we were in the studio. And I ended up sat in with Carl Osborne while we were recording. And um, got this big fat old bass and got a sock and wrapped it around the strings. There was no rattler in it. I just did it. And a uh, big old fleck. And, uh,
it means what else is, oh yeah in in sanskrit it's supposed to mean flame or inspiration and it does mean fort lal Kila is the red fort so uh but flame and inspiration i some some guy told me that who was a harry krishna and then someone else told me that it's total bullshit so who knows around it, he, he, he's a thousand percent he motivates everyone on stage in the early days yeah it's, you, he's got an intimidating head in him you know you're going what the hell is this you know what i mean i remember actually year, when i just joined and uh, I, I was getting used to that i remember one time jamming away and some sound check yeah yeah and i opened my eyes and i was like ah and i was like rolling and go <gasps> what the fuck <laughs> it really warped me and i remember him after me he said don't worry about that that's just me I'm, I, that's just the way i look <laughs> I love Baby Mouse, even though I'm playing about two cymbal notes on it and, and one floor tom with, it, with a, a, a mallet beater. So, yeah, I love listening to that. Like, I think it's gorgeous. It's perhaps two years ago, so that was 2014, maybe 2015. We were in Denmark. We were downstairs backstage in a place called Porta Allen, and Dee started playing the tune. Again. Well, Baby Mouse came, just came about was um, when my, my daughter was born. I was giving her a little bath, and... Uh, she was um, just. She was actually wearing this little T-shirt, and it was called it had Baby Mouse written on it for some reason. That's why I just called it Baby Mouse, but it didn't really have anything to do with a, a, a baby mouse or anything. But I just, uh, it just kind of came to me to tune just when I was giving her a bath. That's all, really. It just, I just popped out, started singing to her, and the tune just came out, and I remembered it, and I went and I suppose then just put it onto the fiddle. Um, so I would remember it. Colin then wrote lyrics for it. I just said, uh, do that again, do that again, do it again. I have th things coming into my head. I have it, so scribble down the words very quickly. And um, essentially, um, I'm looking forward to the day. I'm looking forward to the morning and um, getting rid of the night from me. You know, it's almost like waking up and shaking it off, all this kind of thing. Um, uh, because we're flowering fave law, we're flowering. And then it's Ordog, Punton, Jalvon, Shishala, Lardikin and tour them the law with give me your hand and then the the change that the bridge kind of is um we, we heard the sweet song of the blackbird we saw the uh, sun rising i saw away with that we'd be flowering forever so it's very simple in a way it's, it's kind of a um almost a paint by numbers a love song in a way it has all those little elements where it's all about love so it's, it's very gentle very simple but it seems uh, maybe it's simplicity is what, what makes it nicer I'm I'm delighted I'm singing it. That's all you know. At this stage, I'm it's like great. I get a chance to sing. Cool.
Sardigit. We put it into the set because it was bubbling up. It was bubbling up in me as well. I got kind of cross with the corruption. And maybe I don't have to get cross. I'm sure there's been corruption since before the dinosaurs came on the scene. And there'll probably be corruption long after I'm gone. But some of the corruption I saw, may, and just on television, you know, from councillors around Ireland and that kind of thing, are really, really cross, really cross. And even just, not just the corruption, then I tied a few things into it. Sometimes I see how everybody, all my contemporaries, are really enthralled with money, like enthralled with it. And I'm not. I'm still really in love with music, really in love with people. I love the courage people show from all walks of life. Anybody who's willing to dance, get up, even express themselves, I love it. Like, and I do admire people who have money and stuff, but. It just seems to reduce the human spirit that you're going to waste it collecting money. Money is grand for buying stuff, but it's not a destination. And it seems like all this country's into is money. So that's kind of what Orla Gazarigit is about. So that was the first time we played it. We just went for it there. We did it a little bit in practice, trying to bring it up to somewhere. Sometimes it can take a year for us practicing and doing it in a few gigs before the tune. We we're in command of it, you know. So when we were playing it there, we didn't know when the stop starts, next sections or anything. It was just pure intuition, you know? Oh, I'm gonna start again. 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 Oh, I'm gon
my favorite track on the live album, uh, Shumalaba into A minor reel. It, it's because it, it, it gets, I think it, it gets that hypnotized feel, you know. Something spontaneous that happened uh, at the gig was the famous singer Kaya uh, came over from Poland and sang with us. And she had improvised a singing part herself and, and the other vocalist. Beautiful melody, you know. When she sings, you get the goose pimples coming on there. It's fairly active. You can feel it comes up like a wave, you know. If you were a surfer, you'd like it. You'd like that bit where the wave comes in and, whoa, game on, you know. So when that song that she brought to the mix comes in, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big lift.
Ich bin so cool, ich mach. Tag und Kasse an der Stach. Stach ist am Ach, schau dir. Und tam und tam. Tam und tam. Amen, wann er da. Doch, ich bin so ein Kram. Die Lach an der Dach. 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 Ich bin so cool, ich mach. Tag und Kasse an der Stach. Stach ist am Ach, schau dir. Und tam und tam. I was trying to translate in this, um, this article, the headline of an article from Poland, and uh, it said, Kilo, uh, Wusnes, Lutles, Lutles, Wus. And so uh, I put it into Google Translate and it came out with. Da -da -da. No, it came out with um, syphilis the first time. So we're known as syphilis in uh, Poland. sometimes badly generally with on stage definitely a, a bit of telepathy it's easy to communicate on stage hmm. easier to communicate on stage than off stage I've had moments of real ecstasy playing music, live music, you know. I go on a sort of a journey when I do a gig. So between one song and another, and I suppose years ago we used to almost make it more like that. We would emphasize those things. Like if we were doing, like we would, we would take note of what kind of atmosphere each song was and we'd sort of link them together to sort of almost more deliberately bring people on a journey. Like I used to travel across the country to see Mick Christopher play, you know what I mean? It meant that much to me to get to a gig to hear him sing. I used to be in tears at some of the gigs, the uh, stuff, and, and it's hard to say what things mean to you because they're in the back of your mind. They're not always connected to words, you know? But that's what I'm trying to do for the audience or with the audience, you know what I mean? I suppose the best part of playing live is the, uh, the energy that uh, comes and the energy like we sort of whip up the energy ourselves but also it comes back at you from an audience sometimes we ask each other you know to see you out in the audience uh, i was trying to play to get him out of the seat the whole night Fuck, i wouldn't budge i'm still at it i'm addicted to love <laughs> no playing skinheads it's good crack it's good crack for tune do you know what i mean it's really it's fun it's a lot of fun to play it's a cool rock and tune and a lot of like all kinds of people like that tune you know it's a good old you know headbanger tune they love it love it yeah yeah i mean we played it down in the biker fest in uh, killarney and the bikers love it <laughs> it's so funny and it was called skinhead <laughs>
lot of the time, because I'm singing Os Gwelga, people aren't necessarily getting what I'm saying, you know, which is, that's not how I set out to do things, you know. But it's just, I'm a Gwelgar. That's what I talk, you know. Um, so sometimes we try, or I try, get some songs out in English, which is handy because people can hear what kind of thing I'm at. And um, in Raise the Road, I've written sections off it. Or, like I wrote it a long time ago. I would have written some of it for D, D's eldest fella, Tiggy, at some point along the way when he was a young fella and I'd be away thinking about him. And I suppose the gist of it for me is always don't be afraid, be courageous and shine. You know what I mean? Burn it up like a big, big bonfire, you know? And no apologies for it either. And I'll back you up if you do it. That's my general gist of life. And it's the crack as well. So in the way Raise the Road is self-explanatory. It's just that. Just that, you know. Manny's the cheek been turned now. Manny's the fist unfolded. Manny's the lesson taught and learned. Manny's the weight been shouldered. Long before you came to be. Long before you came to be. Long before you came to be. He here. So you learn to read and write, and you learn to tell the time. And then you learn to walk, and you learn to talk. You learn to reason why. Go watch your ease, boy. Go do as you please. Prove your point and say your piece. Hold your temper. Hold your tongue. Wait for the moment to come, and it'll come. And then raise, raise the road before you. Raise the road before you. Got to go raise the road before you. Go, whoa, 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 whoa. On you go. Raise the road before you. Raise the road before you. Got to go raise the road before you go a whoa 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 man is the hero born now man is the dream been stolen man is the bridge been built on burn man is the heart been broken long before you came to be long before you came to be long before you became to be here so you learn to shave your face and you learn to tie your own shoelace and you learn to choose how to win and lose you learn your place in the human race so go stay on your feet match what you meet go sleep drink eat and take your seat fight your corner stand your ground throw your shape and don't back down and then raise, raise the road before you raise the road before you got to go raise the road before you go whoa 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 on you go raise the road before you raise the road before you got to go Doing, doing the live album is, is all about energy. There can be mistakes, there can be anything, but if you feel the buzz of the energy that you're in it, you play it loud, you go, Jesus Christ, you know, that's what it is. And we've been recording lots of gigs over the years, and I've heard them occasionally, you listen to the, sort of the roughs of them, and it, a lot of the time, it's very hard to capture that, the vibe, you know, that you get in a live gig, because it's, when it, it's so clinical when you hear it recorded. I just basically spent some time convincing the lads that look let me do this. I think I think there's an album here, you know. Long before you became to be here. So you learn to live your life. And you learn to love, so try and try and you learn how you like to spend the night. You learn what's wrong, or what's alright. You got the one life here, boy. That's the love from start to stop, from Timothy Top, but give it a best shot. Show us what you got, man. Sow your seeds, collect the crop, and then raise the road before you. I brought Tommy, our sound man, in because I wanted, if it's a live album, he's, he's, I want him to do what he does live. bits of tuning just or just nudging things here and there not, not much though you know and in uh, Scots Gaelic seemingly which is should the name should be in Irish it means um, one so beautiful, not only, not even a poet could describe her, or alternatively, only a poet could describe her. So um, there's been a whole load of Kila babies, uh, spelled, misspelled the way we misspell ours, K I for the L A. But there is a word in Irish which is uh, C I for the L E, and that's just a translation of the keel of a boat, Kila. 
So, well, I brought one of my, I brought my tattoo as a tune of my own that I've had, I'd written about two years ago. Uh, yeah, about two years ago. And I brought it to them and said, here, have a listen, see what you think. And they liked it. You know, there's a couple of other ones that I've written and they're incorporating them in. But like, we meet up once a week. Well, half of us meet up. The guys that are in Dublin, we meet up once a week and we just trash out stuff, go through. So I'm very, yeah, I'm very much involved in the, in that process and it's really nice actually you know it's to be fully involved with the creative construction of music in the band most of the bands that i've ever been in don't rehearse much uh, the frames were famous for sort of writing songs and sound checks uh, keyless seemed to be the same way somebody will bring forward a tune or a song and then we, we just, so most of the work is done, the skeleton of, of the work is done, and we just try and br give it an arrangement live, you know? And uh, sometimes it's a little bit busky and it doesn't work, work, but most of the time it does. Funnily enough, this live album has two or three tracks that we hadn't played before. We just decided to give them a little bit of a run and see how they went. And they turned out great, you know? And just, just a little bit of magic, a little bit of thrown in the audience participation. And, and it happens almost with a little bit of luck, I think. Maybe you could say the audience are very much part of the writing of them because they're part of, you know, we're, we're writing them in front of the audience, you know, so that's kind of exciting. And as I say, in the live album, that's what happened with three of the, 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 the tracks. Or Agazarigas, Put a Or, and uh, Baby Mouse, I think we'd only played it once or twice as well. So we're just really happy with the way they, they, they came out, you know. I remember originally hearing the roughs. Um, the point where the tunes come in and on Tamani. There's a track on Tamani and it, it, it's, it's a vocal thing and a pummeling kind of, we usually do it as an encore because it's so intense, you know? And uh, for some reason, there's a gap between uh, when the vocal stops and the tune comes in. Normally it's straight into the tune. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, we just had this length of thing. And what this did was create this, this whole um, other atmosphere. What exactly are you talking about here? <laughs>
Well, it was more like a vehicle to get gigs through. It was like a name we could use, and we could grab everyone off the street and say, right, listen, we have a gig in UCD. We're calling Aquila, you know? So, yeah, we just kept using the name for to front whatever outfit. But there was a kind of a core of us, you know? We've been calling ourselves Cover, but uh, two of the guys had just left the band. So uh, we were in transition, and we were trying to get a new name. Anyway, this guy says, what's, what's the name of your group? And Ronan, I remember Ronan turned, looked at the bar and turned back around and said, Tequila. I was kind of going, that's a cool name. I would say he just saw a tequila bottle and he left out the tip. <laughs> 